Hey Masters, if you know me and you've been listening to my podcast, you know health and nutrition is number one. Check out AdvoCare products. I am a distributor. Go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. We got everything you could imagine for your health and nutrition goals. If you're interested, at the end of the podcast, at the very end, there'll be more information on the products. Also, Land Voice is one of our sponsors. They have amazing services. If you need leads, please check out Land Voice for a FISBO, expired, circle prospecting, a dialer, whatever you need. Go to davidihill.com affiliates. You can click the Land Voice link and all of the special opportunities will be there. Get ready for one more sale. Inspiring you with ideas through powerful and engaging interviews with top performers of their field. Now, join us as we discuss techniques and strategies of the coolest and most successful people on the planet. If we take some sort of steps, small steps, then the failures aren't as big. So we can learn quickly and not as painfully as we can if we kind of like hold our breath and take a great big jump into something. For somebody out there who's not good at having that morning routine, start with one thing that you know you can do every morning without fail so you can build that muscle and some confidence in yourself around it. Hey Masters, it's David Hill here with another episode of Path to Mastery. And we're bringing back my good friend, Elise Enriquez. She has been with us now three times, every time. It's brilliant. Guys, she talks to us about purpose, about vision, about how to achieve our big goals, my friends. And that's really what it's all about, you know, achieving goals. And she's got some strategies that help us. You know, I think a lot of us rely on our brain, you know, on, on, on memory and in mindset to achieve goals when really uh, we should be creating systems. And, uh, you know, it's really a unique interview. First time I've heard this, and, and I just think it's brilliant. I think some of us actually kind of do it without thinking about it, but now it's more purposeful. So she talks to us about creating a clear vision, a purpose, and, and just setting, putting some systems in place to achieve that, you know, and, and as I was listening to this, getting ready to do this recording, it reminded me, you know, I met Chuck Liddell. I don't know if you guys know who Chuck Liddell is. He was the UFC uh, light heavyweight champion. I mean, the guy's phenomenal. I'm a huge UFC fan. And I met him at, a, at an event where he was uh, doing signings. I asked him a question. I says, Chuck, you know, I says, how does somebody achieve the level of success that you've achieved and uh, it was really interesting because like he just he was at a booth so he comes from around the counter and like i'm like well, what's this guy gonna do to me like he's gonna body slam me or something like and he, he puts his arm around me and he says you know that's the same conversation i try to have with my son all the time and uh it was awesome i mean here i am with chuck liddell he's got his arm around me my wife gets a great picture and he says uh you know Listen, here's the thing. I show up at the gym before everybody and I leave after everybody. He's basically saying, you know what? I outworked everybody. That's how I became the champion. I have the work ethic. It means nobody was going to outwork with me. He said if there was a new strategy or, or, or something uh, that he needed to know when it came to mixed martial arts, he wanted to learn it as soon as possible. You know, he was always in front of what's going on and outworking. I mean, I don't know. I just thought that was awesome. And it kind of reminds me of what Elise talked about today when she talks about, you know, the vision, because with Chuck, I mean, he wanted to be the best and he became the best in the world. I mean, in, in his prime, he was the best. I mean, everybody knows who Chuck Liddell is, uh, anybody in the MMA world. And, uh, and he was the guy. I mean, he was the guy to be the best. He defended his belt. And because his purpose was so clear uh, they was able to do that. And, and when your purpose is that clear and your vision's that clear, then you're going to do what it takes to show up. And it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how tough it is. And, and like he said, it, first guy in the gym, last guy out of the gym, anything that he needed to improve on, any new arts, anything he, he wanted to know. Anyway, I know it's a long intro. I wanted to throw that in there for you. Uh, guys, I, I really hope you enjoy Elise. As I remind you, hey, we're in real estate. We'd love to do referrals with you. Keep us in mind for Central Mass. We'll take phenomenal care of your clients and give you a 26% referral. Guys, enjoy. Enjoy. 
Hey, Masters, David Hill here with another episode for you. You know, as always, we go out and we, we find talent. It is no shortage again this week. We're bringing back my friend, probably one of our, our favorite guests, uh, Elise Enriquez, for the third time. So, hey, what's up, Elise? Not too much. Well, lots, lots of good stuff happening right now, of course, as always, right? But I love being back on the show. For a third time, thank you. Yeah, well, you get so much good feedback, and, uh, and uh, people just absolutely love you. So that's why we keep bringing you back, and it's just such good content. Oh. You know, somebody said, man, why don't you just guys just have, like, the uh, Elise David show? Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we could maybe do that someday in the future. But anyway, it's, it's great to have you back. You're a business owner. You train business owners on vision, right? I mean, that's ultimately what you do. That's what you help me do. You help us create uh, systems, consistency, and uh, you know, creating a strong vision and help people build teams, ultimately. That, that's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, <laughs> what, better yet, why don't you just tell us who you are and, and tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll get, get, sure. get going. Sure, yeah. I'm a coach and consultant in the Seattle area and I work primarily with business owners. What they do is they hire me to help them create that clear vision like you were talking about, um, where we look at what is their purpose, why are they here, what is it they're meant to be doing, and then how can they bring that into their business and in their lives and create nice, consistent systems to help them make that vision, make that purpose a reality? And so it's consistently and constantly kind of doing that back and forth jump between the horizon level of purpose and vision and the ground level of action and projects. And so I help people navigate back and forth between those spaces so that they can create the success that they want and have lives that they love. Love it. Love it. And that's what we're all looking for, right? We're all looking to be more productive, right? And, and get more out of out of the time that we're investing into our business. But for some people too, you know, it's not just about all business, right? Because I, you know, I want to get home and I'm going to be able to spend time with my family as well. And, and that's important to me. So what we're going to talk about today is, is achieving your goals on purpose, right? So uh, we all want to feel like we're productive every day, uh, we want to get the most out of, uh, you know, the most important stuff done, I should say, right? And so you're going to talk to us today about, you know, how to, to make the most out of our day and get the most important stuff done in your life and in your business and help them create success that's uh, sustainable, right? It's sustainable yeah. and people are going to have lives that are actually worth living. And you know what, Elise, it's, it's really about being fulfilled, right? So when I, when I get up in the morning, I'm looking forward to jumping out of bed and going to work. I'm not just like, oh man, another, another grind. I gotta, I gotta show up and grind, right? Exactly. And you know, people can do the grind for a while, but that's where the success may not be sustainable. It's creating success that you can actually maintain and keep up so that you don't have to kind of do the whole sprint, recover, sprint, recover thing. You get to just keep going. And the work that you're actually doing feels good because it's aligned with your purpose. It's aligned with your vision. It's aligned with your values, the way you want to operate. Yeah. You know, but the why, I mean, when the why is strong enough, you don't even mind the grind though, right? I mean, because if you're just doing what you're passionate about and, and you're focused on something and you see it in the horizon, right? You don't mind the grind, right? You don't mind getting up, showing up, working hard, doing all that stuff. And that's purpose, right? So you're going to talk to us today yep. about purpose. How does knowing your purpose help, help us focus on those things and, and help us ultimately uh, achieve our goals? Well, you know, I think especially you all know as business owners out there, right, there's a lot of demands on our time. There's a lot of opportunities out there that we can pursue. There's a lot of new tools, new strategies, new apps, new technology. There's just a lot of inputs in our daily life that can grab our attention. And when we don't know why we're here, you know, like you said, why do we jump out of bed every morning? And more importantly, why should the rest of the world care that we got out of bed every morning? When we don't know that big why, we can get easily distracted and working on the wrong thing. So when you know what your purpose is, it's a lot easier to look at an opportunity, look at a project, look at a request and say, is this really something I should be working on? Mm -hmm. Using it as a filter is really powerful. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest challenges I know that, that I face and probably a lot of our listeners is just the amount of things that are presented to us each day. And, and what do we say no to? Like, how do we know what we should focus on, what we shouldn't? Right. You know, that is where the purpose part comes into play is saying, you know, what am I here for? So for example, for me, my purpose at the highest level is to foster understanding and acceptance of self and others so that we can come together to make the world a better place. So if there's an opportunity out there that's, you know, a great, great exposure for me and my business somehow, but it isn't aligned with my 
purpose, my drive every day to help people understand themselves and understand each other so they can collaborate and do cool stuff in the world. If it's not going to align with that, I shouldn't be doing it, no matter how wonderful the opportunity is. You know, mm. it, might, it might be just something that's going to feed my ego, but not actually move my purpose forward. So it's paying attention to a great opportunity doesn't always mean a great opportunity for me and what I'm trying to do in the world. So how do people decide? I mean, you know, like if, if there's a way, because I know that's one of the biggest challenges we probably still talk about. And I know, I think we've talked about this on two other interviews as well as with other people. Like some people uh, still are, and I'm not, I couldn't tell you I'm 100% crystal clear because I think it changes, but our, our purpose or our why, how do we know? How do we know what it is? Yeah. How do we know what it is? How do we know what we should focus on? Yeah. So when it comes to knowing what your purpose is, it's already there. It's just uncovering it. You've been living your purpose in some way, shape or form all of your life. And there's patterns that you've created that point exactly to what it is. It's a matter of going back and looking at those patterns. It's a matter of going back and thinking about, you know, when have I felt most alive in my work? And and that work can be paid work or volunteer work, right? You know, when have I felt really inspired and motivated in spite of overcoming big challenges? Like you're saying, like when the grind feels worth it, right? When you're just like, I don't care that this is hard. This is fun. And it's getting, you know, it's getting me to where I want to go. Um, you know, what kind of environments are you in where you feel most supported and like yourself? And it's just taking, studying your past to figure out what the patterns are so that you can then come up with a focus for yourself, for your life that then becomes the filter for the things that you do. Is there like a question that you have? I know this might sound like the magic question, right? But like a question, what like somebody could ask, ask themselves it really like to kind of figure out what what my purpose is or what, where would you start i would say that there's like a, a single magic question i think some of those some of the questions that i already mentioned are the ones that that help of, of looking at when have i been at my best when do i feel on top of the world and some of those things might be you know things that you did when you were much much younger and you just lost track of that over time because of expectations or because of responsibilities. Um, so it's, it's saying, you know, when have I been at my best? When have I felt on top of the world? What were those scenarios and what are the common links between those scenarios? Mm. So here's something I'm doing right now. I'm going through the Freedom Journal, uh, which is um, I don't know if you know, John Lee Dumas is it's journaling every single day for 100 days to, to achieve a goal. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, so one of the cool things about it is I journal in the morning what my goals are. Then I journal at the end of the day, basically how I did, what went well, what didn't go well. But what Mm -hmm. it's doing is it's creating a kind of a log for me to kind of go back and look. And I'm I'm on about day 25 right now of all the things I've done, what things I've enjoyed, where I struggled. Perfect. I mean, is that does that seem helpful? I know we weren't this conversation wasn't meant to talk about journaling, but that's a way that I've been able to kind of implement uh, some of these things that I, that I realized, maybe I didn't even realize I was so passionate about it until I yeah. started journaling. Yeah, no, I think anything that's going to help you capture data, right? Like that's basically helping you capture data. And then it's looking at that data and finding the patterns. And so at the end of these 30, you said it's 30 days? It's, not, it's actually, right? it's, it's, it's 100 days, 100 days. 100 days. Yeah. Even better. That's going to be even better. So, so at, actually, I would be looking back. I'd be looking back at day 30, right, coming up. And then that way, your next 30 days can be even more purposeful reflect back again at day 60 and you're, you know, and so on. So that way, as you get through these 100 days, you are becoming more and more purposeful in what you're doing. And I think you're going to find good data points to help you uncover enough information to come up with, you know, some sort of purpose statement, some sort of big why statement. So one thing I consistently come up every single day and I'll actually read, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to actually pull out the journal and I'm going to, I'm going to share what, you know, my challenge is. It, it, it's struggle. I, I struggled with, with lead gen today. I struggled with time blocking, you know, things like that. And I think that's, that happens to a lot of us, right? So I don't think I'm that uncommon, but I guess I may be, right? I don't know if you have the answer to this, but like, how do we know what to focus on? Because it, s- it seems like there's just so many things coming sometimes we, we even lose track. Yeah, I look at things as horizons, right? I get this concept a little bit from David Allen, the author of Getting Things Done. And he talks about our life as a series of horizons or different levels. And at the highest horizon is purpose. After that, you have your vision and your goals. I think value to me, values are in there and all of it, but it's purpose, then vision, then goals. And then you're looking at your areas of responsibility in your life and then the projects that you need to take on in order to achieve these goals. And then the actions, the activities that have to happen every day to make those goals a reality. And so if you don't have alignment all the way from top to bottom, it's going to be hard to pick 
what to do. So I would be looking at, you know, do your goals support the two to three year vision that you have for yourself? Does your vision align with your purpose? If those things are all in alignment, then it'll be easier to say, okay, today in this moment, what do I need to do? Hmm. Especially if you have it written out so that you can reference it on a regular basis, go back to it, you know, daily. And so I think the activity that you're doing right now is going to be good because you'll get to see like, these are the things I'm saying are important to me. Am I doing them or not? And if I'm not, I need to really question whether or not they're important. Where Where is there a, a lack of alignment is what I would be looking for. Mm, that's a great point. That's a really good point. Uh, so, okay, so let's talk about, um, you know, perspective now. You know, sometimes people can become overwhelmed, right, by just the amount of things that are coming at them. You know, I know that's yeah. something that I... I used to struggle with a little bit more. I've, I've become a lot better at it. And I honestly, frankly, I think it's through meditation. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, but, but sometimes people get overwhelmed. You know, how do we um, get beyond that? Well, part of it is that we count on our brains too much. <laughs> we, we think our brains are better at things than it really is. You know, even though, you know, there are a lot of really smart people out there, our brains were really meant for creating ideas and not for actually holding them. But we we think that our brains can remember all of the things we need to remember and you know be able to recall them at all the right times. But that's not necessarily the case. Our brains are much better at actually coming up with ideas. And so when overwhelm is hitting, I find the most useful thing to do is to get everything out of your head and have a system for capturing all the things that come into your head, come into your inbox, you know, the drive-bys that people have when they're asking questions or making requests so that you can pause and look at that instead of getting on autopilot, you know, firefighter mode of let me just, you know, fix all these problems, say, okay, what has my attention and what should I really be focusing on? You can't count on your brain to constantly be doing that for you. You have to purposely pull all of that out of your head, get it in front of you, and get it into a system that allows you to prioritize and make decisions about what you're going to do when you have time to actually do things. All right. So, you know, my goal is show up in the morning, do my lead generation. You know, I, I know what's important. I, I, I write it down. And then all of a sudden, you know, a team member walks in, I get a call, you know, this happens. So these are things that are just showing up. So you said, you know, get it. I don't see how, how do you get it out of your brain? I guess I'm, I'm kind of going back to what, what you just said. I mean, cause it's just, there's just so many ideas and things going through your head. Is there mm-hmm. a way to actually do that? Or, I mean, cause I, I think for me, routine is, is, is the key. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so what, when you say system, what are you referring to? Like, how, how do we do that? How do we get that out of our brains? Yeah. Well, you know, for I know a lot of your listeners are Keller Williams agents and they know that models are good. Taking a, a model that works and applying it in your life is a good thing, right? You guys have the millionaire real estate agent model to work off of. Mm-hmm. The model I use to get things out of my brain and to help me prioritize and, and systematize things. So it's really routinized, I guess you could say, my thinking. It comes from David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. So it's called, it's C-Core. The acronym is C-Core, Right. The first C is capture. So get all of those things out of your head and onto paper or into a a list somewhere. All the stuff that pops in your head, all the things that people are asking for. And then you clarify. For each of those things, you decide, is this actionable or not? Do I need to do something about this? Yes or no? And then you you have a system of organization that says, okay, here are all the different things that come into my life. I need a place for all of these things so that when it comes time to engage with those things, I know where to find them. And then you have to make sure that, so you set up systems to do that, right? Like Evernote and inbox subfolders and things like that. And then the R stands for reflect. So you you take a look at your system on a regular basis, daily, weekly, monthly, depending on what it is you're looking at, but at the very least a weekly review to say, okay, you know, what came across my desk this week? What were the requests? What does my calendar look like next week? What emails have I not responded to? So that way you can get your system up to date and functioning well. And then the E stands for engage, which is when I have 15 minutes between meetings on, you know, Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., what is going to be the right thing to do? And having a system set up that allows you to know the right way to use that 15 minutes. Mm. You're talking about real structure. So real deal. <laughs> We're real deal here. So the the model is C-Core, right? The model is capture, clarify, organize, reflect, engage. The systems are whatever work for you. 
for some people, the systems might be pen and paper for that. I laugh because that, that works to me to, to some extent, but in the long run, I need, you know, I have apps and I have things like Evernote and Google calendar and IQtel, your scheduling system that I use to schedule this call or schedule this interview. That's the system, right? So you tap into systems and tools that work for you based on the model itself. You are listening to one more sale. This actually leads me into the next question. And I have a system, but sometimes I choose to to ignore. And I guess that would bring us back to earlier when we talked about maybe the, the purpose isn't big enough. I don't, I don't know. Because I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll tell you, I'm the, the most productive is when I ignore everything else. I mean, yes. maybe it's just a matter of just not beating myself up so much, realizing I'm getting a little bit better at it every day. And, and I think we had this conversation the other day about contacts, right? Where, you know, if you expect someone to just show up and make 100 contacts, maybe that's too much for them. So let them make 40. And then once they hit 40, then build on that. Is it, is it similar to that? It absolutely is. And it's about building muscle. And you know, because you work out, right? You didn't start out like how much do you bench now? Um, I, I used to bench a lot more, but I could probably still okay, bench two fifty. Give me a measurement of something. So, two fifty, yeah. Two fifty now. When you started out, when you first started trying to do any sort of weightlifting, what were you able to do? At seventeen, I think I was benching one hundred and fifteen or something. So I mean, I've worked my way up. I, at one point, I could bench three twenty-five. I'm pretty excited about Holy that. Holy cow! Yeah, but yeah. That's a great example too, right? Like, there's. It's a matter of how you're using that muscle and how well you're working it, right? You don't start out. At in the 300s, right? No, definitely <laughs> Start, not. I, mean, I think I started out at 40 or 60 or something like that. I don't even know what I can bench now, but because I don't do it anymore. But that was if I wanted to, I could really build that muscle. If it mattered to me, if it was important to me, if it was if it aligned with where I want to go in my life, it might mean starting small, but that's okay. It's to make that progress, and it's it's with any routine, any habit, you have to just start with something so you can show yourself that you can keep it going. So for example, if you, if you're, you know, are horrible at a morning routine, which I know you're not because you meditate and you work out, you do those and you have your shakes and everything. But for somebody out there who's not good at having that morning routine, start with one thing that you know, you can do every morning without fail. So you can build that muscle and some confidence in yourself around it. For example, just drinking a glass of water as soon as you wake up every morning, just try that for a week or two. And you start to realize, Oh, this is something I can do. All right, now you add something, add five minutes of meditation into that mm. for a week or two. Okay, now add some squats, <laughs> you know, right? Okay, now add reading for five minutes. Now, you know, so you just keep building and building on that routine. And it's the same thing in your business. You, you find the routine that will help you get the things out of your head that are in your head, right? That all the ideas that you have, get them into a system that allows you to prioritize them so that you're not distracted by what you think you should be doing. You can actually be focused on what you know needs to happen every day. But you can't do that by just saying, okay, I'm going to launch this big system. You just start little by little. Mm-hmm. Like every day I'm going to make a to-do list. I'm going to create a, an idea list. I'm going, you know, whatever it might be. And I think what you're doing with your journaling is a, is a great way to do that. Like these are my goals. Here's how I did. What did I learn every day? Yeah, I love that. And honestly, to do that, I honestly had to start waking up 15 minutes earlier because it threw my routine off yeah, having right. to do that 15 minutes of journal. And the other thing, too, is, you know, sometimes when we got too many things going on, um, that's when we can start missing things or like a couple weeks ago, embarrassed to say, I forgot about a listing appointment. You know, I just had so many things in my calendar. I, I, I forgot about it. And so one thing I added to my routine and I, and I you know, talking to my coach and and some other things was, and now in the morning, the first thing, one of the first things, not the first thing, but I've added to my routine that I have to look at my calendar every single morning. Like I yeah. have to look at my day and say, okay, at least get an idea of it, a glimpse of, okay, these are the things I have going on today. Otherwise I miss things. I, I forget, was it, I'm doing a coaching call, a group coaching call, and I call in at the wrong time. I mean, that, it makes no sense, right. but it's, <laughs> it's just because there's so many things going on. You know what I mean? Well, and there's, and there's so much going on with that often means is there's so much going on in your head, number one, and two, you're not really in touch with your systems. So in order to, to have a system, you have to trust it. Like in order to use a system, you have to trust it, but in order to trust it, you have to use it. So it's this catch 22 in really building trust in the systems that you create for yourself. The only way you're going to do it is, is to keep using it faithfully, knowing that some things are going to slip through the cracks at first while you figure it out, but then to keep using it 
faithfully. And, you know, one of my clients, even though she has, you know, an electronic calendar, she has Google calendar, right? She's a really successful real estate agent in the Seattle area here. She's a busy, busy lady. She is constantly, you know, running off to appointments, but what helps her is to just jot down doing what you're saying, like look at your calendar, jot down the actual appointments that you're going to. And then she thinks of anything else that needs to get done that day and fills in her time. And she does it with pen and paper, right? She's not using some really complex project management tool. She has other places to keep her projects in check, but like she, that's how she makes sure that she is focused for the day. She writes on a piece of paper, what her day looks like in, in a calendar format. And then also the other things that she wants to get done. And so that allows her to say, okay, this is really what my focus is for today. Mm. Why can some people do this and and other people are going to struggle with it? Well, you know, I think especially in real estate, we all know there's a lot of different trainings and coaching and systems out there. And more often than not, you guys are all hearing about sales systems, right? How to, how to build your business and build your client base. And it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. You know, you go to, you know, family reunion and you see some people on stage and think, why can they do it? And I can't, well, they took an approach that worked for them. That just so happens that the the coaching or the training model they picked actually works for their personality. It works for their wiring. And that, that was great for them, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And so it's a matter of saying, okay, this is a great system. This is a great model but this is not my style. This is not my approach. I'm not a cold caller or I'm not a door knocker or, and it's okay to not be those things, but you do know that you have to be making contact on a regular basis with a lot of people. How are you going to do that in a way that works for you? Mm. The problem is they're trying to, you know, people where it works for one person, it doesn't work for the other is that they're trying to take an approach that actually doesn't work for them. That's not in alignment with their purpose. It's not in alignment with their values. So it's figuring out, okay, how can I be purposeful about, for example, my contacts, right? In a way that feels good to me, in a way that, you know, stretches me a little bit, but still has me reaching out as much as I need to, to my database. People listening to this interview that say, okay, you know what? I want to be more focused. I want to, I'm going to create a routine. What's going to be their biggest struggle, biggest challenge with this? I think the biggest challenge is finding the tools that they feel like they can trust, really. Actually, that's can I give two challenges, two of the biggest challenges? <laughs> one, one is finding the tools they can trust, but the other one is that they're going to get a system set up and they're not going to review it on a regular basis. The most important thing you can do with any system you have is to check in on it regularly. And so, you know, I do a weekly review every Friday. I have an hour at least set aside to go through to make sure my inbox is empty, to make sure my in tray, like I have a, you know, an actual in tray on my desk for things that I know I'll get to in a week, you know, within the week, make sure that that's empty and all the action items are identified. I go through and look at my calendar and see, was there any follow-up that I didn't do from this last week? Is there anything I need to prep for for the next two weeks? And so that way I can update my actions list from there. I look at my projects. I look at ideas that I had that I stuck away and see if any of them need to come onto the you know front burner or not, or if I leave them as a back burner. But every week I'm doing that engagement with my system to see how does it look? How am I doing? What tweaks do I need to make? Awesome, my friend. You know, where does, um, you know, like I know I'm looking at what you sent me um, and it talks about fear of failure and perfectionism. I mean, those are things that I I think a lot of us deal with. Uh, where, where does that kind of fall into this this whole thing? You know, fear of failure, perfectionism, I kind of feel like they're, you know, two sides of the same coin or maybe even the same side of one coin, but it's it's a thing that gets in your way. It's the same thing that keeps you from taking any kind of action. And we need to take action in order to get feedback. You know, we need to take action in order to get results, regardless of what those results are. Even if the results aren't what we want, now at least we know that that action that we took wasn't the best one. So what can we do? So when we can get over that fear of failure and embrace failure instead and know that we fail forward and know that with every failure, so long as we commit to learning, it's not a big deal, right? And if we can take some sort of steps, small steps, then the failures aren't as big. So we can learn quickly and not as painfully as we can if we kind of like hold our breath and take a great big jump into something. So it's really important to take action. And so when you're feeling stuck and you're feeling like perfectionism and failure and overwhelm are getting in your way, you know, pick one thing you know you need to work on and say, if I were to move this one thing forward, what would be the very next thing I would do if I had nothing else to do today? What would be the very next action Elise could walk in and see me doing to move this thing forward. And that's your next action. And when you can think of things in those terms, 
failure doesn't seem so daunting. Perfectionism doesn't seem so overwhelming and they don't become such big obstacles. Love it, my friend. Hey, it's always a pleasure to connect with you. I, I know when people listen to this, they're going to not want to hire me as a realtor because I forget my listing appointments and they're not going <laughs> to want me to coach because I forget my, my coaching calls. So, but not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, and, that, and that's why I've got my routine in place. You know, so I know you've got some good things coming up. You've got, a, um, I think it's an eight-week live online course, right? Is that, you've got something coming up. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I will use the PG title of it um, so you don't have to put an explicit sign next to your (laughs) podcast. So I'll just call it Get Your Stuff Together. But basically, it is an eight-week live online course where people will learn the model of C-Core of capture, clarify, organize, reflect, and engage, and put it to work in their lives. And so there'll be eight weeks of training and coaching. So it's live. You'll have access to me for 90 minutes every week, not to mention a Facebook group where you'll get support along the way. And then after that, if you do everything you're supposed to be doing it, you get three additional months of of support from me in, in our own private Facebook group where other graduates are helping each other other graduates of the course are helping each other just get more of the right things done through the system. So it's called, we'll say, get your stuff together. If you just go to eliseenriquez.com forward slash gist, G-Y-S-T, you can learn more about it. Awesome. And I really can't say enough about your your coaching too, because I get the opportunity to coach with you and you help me create the vision. And we still, you, you, I'm, I'm with a different, I'm part of an expansion group now and we right. still use the vision. And, you know, every time uh, something doesn't work all we you know instead of you know blaming or getting frustration it just it just goes right back to the vision well our vision is transforming the real estate experience through communication right so communication yeah. is okay so you know what what did we miss here and and everybody gets that i, I love that the other thing too is and you're just so generous i mean you got like a freebie right if you go to eliseenriquez.com forward slash achieve You'll get access to a free video and PDF that covers some of the concepts that we talked about today and points you to some tools and systems that I actually use. So yeah, head there and you'll get that freebie as well. All right. So Elise, awesome. I, hey, as always, I appreciate your time. I have two more questions. You probably know both of them. The first oh, one is, what did I not ask you that I should have asked? Ugh, even though I know you're going to ask, I'm never prepared for it because I want to be able to respond on the fly. You know, you should have asked me about my favorite tool. I would say that my favorite tool that I use on a regular basis is IQTEL. Um, It combines all of my email accounts into one space and allows me to turn emails into actions, create reminders for follow-up, and it helps me get my inbox to zero on a regular basis. So I, more often than not, more days than not, have my inbox to zero. And every Friday before I leave the office, my inbox, all my inboxes are at zero. And IQTEL helps me do that. Good. Thank you you for sharing that because now I know I'm not a crazy man that always has to make sure my inboxes are at zero every day. <laughs> so that so IQ tell, is that what you said? Correct. IQ tell. All right. Awesome. And at least what is, uh, what is a book recommendation, one book recommendation that everybody should go pick up after listening to this interview? Oh man, as much as I want to say getting things done, you can just learn that in my eight week class. So you don't have to read the whole book, but really the book that I would highly recommend one of my favorites right now is The Slight Edge. It is one of my favorites. It is, And it's so great, David, because it's about what we were talking about earlier, about building routines, building that purposeful, intentional routine into all aspects of your life. And know that if you just stay on those things, that you will learn, you will grow, and you'll get the edge over everyone else. Love it. The Slight Edge. So, hey, listeners, you can go get yourself. I hope you can get yourself a free copy of that. You know if they have it in Audible? Uh, uh, is it on Amazon, Audible? It, it's on Amazon, so I'm, and I'm pretty okay, sure. Awesome. It's on- so, guys, I go to, go to davidsfreebook.com, davidsfreebook.com. Get yourself a free version of that book on Audible. So that's all the you need to do. Edge. The yeah. slight edge. Elise, final question, my friend. What is the one thing you want our listeners to take from this interview today on their path to sales mastery? Create your system for getting the right things done. Don't count on your brain anymore to remind you to do all the things at the right times. That's not what it's meant for. It's meant for creating new, exciting ideas and plans for you to pursue. So create your systems outside of your head to get the most important things done in your life. Man, thank you for tying that all together. That was awesome. I appreciate your time as always. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Hey, Masters, you guys know how important health and nutrition is to me. I just want to talk to you a little bit about products I use called AdvoCare. I've been using these products for about a year and a half now, 
you know, mostly just for energy. They've got a really awesome drink. It's called Spark. You know, if you want to check out anything, I would tell you, go check out the energy drink Spark. That's what I did for, like I said, almost a year and a half without even trying any of their other products. And then this past January, uh, a bunch of us, January 4th, decided we are going to do the 24-day challenge, which is a 10-day cleanse and then 14 days of just really healthy eating, vitamins, uh, meal replacement, just awesome 24 days just to kind of get yourself on track and, and get into some right habits. So Richie Ryan did it with us. Guys, he lost, today's February 5th. I think he's at 24 pounds lost since January 4th. Melissa at our office uh, lost six pounds. Uh, Min at our office lost five pounds. Uh, guys, I mean, listen, th- it's amazing. I, what, regardless, if your goal is losing weight, my goal wasn't losing weight. I did the challenge just so I could experience it. And, you know, I actually I lost a few pounds, but now I, I put some weight back on because I started using some of the supplements and the protein powder and all the other stuff. So now I've gained about three pounds of muscle and just feel awesome. My energy's through the roof. So whether you're looking for energy or you're looking for just wellness, I mean, they've got some amazing green products that I, I love taking before I go to bed. Or if you're looking for performance, athletic products, we've got the athletic performance products. And then just active, you know, if you're an active adult, uh, maybe getting a little little older in the age and you want to just keep everything working the right way and functioning. Listen, Gary Keller said it best. If you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? And I, I just love that. So, hey, I just ask you to check out Advocate's products. I'm a distributor, so I'd love to help you talk to you about your nutrition and health goals. You go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. LiveLongerSmarter.com. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.